Uh, put, some music, put some music in the background on somebody's uh, computer. Good evening, everyone. Hey, Councilor. Hey. Good evening. Okay. I'm here. All right, I'm going to call this meeting to order. The notice requirement provided for the open public meetings law has been satisfied. Notice was properly given said notice being transmitted to the Courier News on Friday, June 12th, 2020, as well as posting notice of this video conference on the city's website. Uh, Mr. Clerk, may I have a web call, uh, roll call? Council Member Davis. Present. Councilman Good. Present. Councilman McKenna. Present. Councilman McCray. Present. Councilwoman Mills Ransom. Present. Vice President. Here. Council President Hockaday. Here. With all members present in a quorum. Thank you, Clerk. Uh, we'll begin with a public hearing on budget amendments. Consideration will now be given for the hearing on calendar year 2020 municipal operating budget amendments. The floor is now open. Uh, the public is, is uh, reminded to raise their hands and we will call on you. Welcome, Vicki. Unmute yourself and uh, you can begin speaking. Good evening. Um, I would like to say that I am in support of the current budget. Um, for the 2020 year. 
Um, as a resident of Plainfield for over 40 years, I was delighted to see that there is going to be uh, no budget increase. And um, the fact that we have received many uh, positive services in the community um, that I am in support of the current budget that is being proposed. Thank you. Thank you. Can we go to uh, Inez Borum? Inez, you should uh, mute yourself and you can speak. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. Last week, as so many of these past weeks have been very, very difficult for most of us who are suffering uh, economically, socially, emotionally, uh, as, as well as spiritually. Uh, but I received a call that there was no going to be no budget increase for the municipal government. That was wonderful news at a very difficult time. And I'm delighted to hear that that budget is going to uh, be such that I will not have to, that I will actually have a little more money in my pocket to take care of some things economically. I want to commend the, the, uh, the council, the president, as well as the chairperson of the, uh, the, uh, the committee for the extraordinary work they have done. Uh, I think it's been a wonderful experience and an outstanding experience as far as the public is concerned. There's no question that the president of the council as well as the uh, committee chair of the um, uh, citizen group had to do extraordinary work to bring all the council members together and the public together to get this present budget. I know each department was probably asked to uh, make some cuts. Some had to make some cuts more than others. And I am sure one of my favorite uh, departments, the recreation department, also had to make cuts. But I, I'm hopeful that they will be able to carry on the wonderful programs that they have. I particularly congratulate the city for receiving a grant for tennis in the parks from the United States Tennis Association. This to me is an outstanding accomplishment and I wish uh, the uh, department luck as they carry out that program. Thank you very much. Congratulations to you all. Thank you. <clears throat> You go to uh, Lynn Anderson person next. Hello, how are you? Good evening to everyone. Good evening. Thank you for having me on. I just wanted to just jump on this call real quick. Uh, just to say that I'm very, very pleased um, with the what the work that the city council has done along with the administration uh, to um, put us in a situation where we have a zero tax increase on our municipal budget. Um, as a real estate agent, that's huge. Uh, you know, clients are constantly uh, concerned about what their taxes are going to be for homes that they're interested in buying. And it really adds a lot uh, in terms of talking to clients to kind of let them know what's going on in your city and let, let them know how strong it's, how everything is going. Uh, so I want to thank um, the council president um, and the other members of the city council um, that put in the work. I know it's tough to try to get people to cut their departments um, and try to remove some of the, um, uh, the overage, but uh, I just wanted to say that I think that you guys are doing a very, very good job. And it's rare when you can see an administration and a council work together collaboratively on behalf of the town. Uh, so I'm really, really wanting to just jump on the call and say uh, thank you. Keep up the good work. 
um, because it definitely does trickle down to um, the rest of us here as we're working in the city to try to attract more people to come in, buy homes, and to live here. Thank you. Thank you. We go to the League of Women Voters. Is it me? It's the League, and it's got to be the wrong screen. Hello? This. Hello. We can hear you. I'm sorry, this is not the League of Women Voters. That just happens to be on my computer. So please disregard the League of Women Voters. <laughs> It's no Honor, 1405 Martin Avenue. Um, like I said, please disregard the League of Women Voters. I'm not speaking for the League of Women Voters. Um, it just happened that that's what logged into the meeting as. No problem. Um, I, I just want to make a point that uh, the cutting of the budget was kind of a necessity due to coronavirus because of all the programs that could not be done um, because of social distancing requirements. So cutting the budget was not something that was, a, it was a collaborative effort, but it was a necessary effort. It had to be done. So there, if Corona wasn't here, there would have been a tax increase on our budget. Uh, so what we need to do is actually go back at the budget and actually propose making additional cuts because Governor Murphy says we can open up the pools, but we cut the pools from the budget. And Governor Murphy saying that we could do other things that we probably have already cut from the budget. So are we opening the pools or not opening the pools? And if we are opening the pools, we already cut that money out of the budget. So the budget needs to be revisited so that we can make those necessary changes. And so why everyone, congratulations for all your wonderful work in cutting, but if it wasn't for Corona, we wouldn't have cut the budget. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, I don't see anyone else. So we'll, we'll go to uh, Robin Wright. Am I unmuted? Yes, you are. You can hear me. Good evening, everyone. Uh, and first and foremost, I'd like to give thanks and kudos to the City Council, uh, Council President uh, Steve Hockaday, and the Finance Chair uh, Charles McRae, along with the administration, for making the necessary cuts to the budget to bring us a zero tax increase. Uh, I, for one, I'm delighted. You know, anytime I can save money, it's a good day especially in these economic times. Um, you know, I, I know that the zero budget is only for the municipal budget, and I'm praying that the school or the county does not impose a, an increase in our tax. So I know if I see an increase in my mortgage payment, which is rolled up to my taxes, uh, my taxes rolled up to my mortgage payment, I know that increase will come from either the school district or the county, who I'm not sure if they are proposing any tax increases, but I hope they're not. I'm just grateful that, that the municipal tax increases, tax budget will not increase this year. Um, I know you guys worked really hard. You listened to the community. You went back, you reviewed the budget a number of times, and you made the necessary cuts. You know, it doesn't matter for whatever reason the cuts were made, if they were COVID-19 or, or whatever. You know, none of us could predict the future. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what's going to happen next year. You know, but whatever happened next year is going to happen. But for today and for now, I'm just grateful that the budget will be stable. Uh, I have one more thing that I, I would like to say in reference to the budget and, and the total budget hearing process. Um, you know, the process, you know, because of, of the pandemic, you know, we all had to change a lot and we had to change quickly. Um, we had to be adaptable. We had to um, think of new ideas and new ways to communicate uh, to the masses. And during the budget hearing process, the council president laid out a guideline 
for the way the process was going to go. Now, this is my second time serving on the CBAC team. And of course, the first time in 2017, we were all able to meet as a group. We were all able to direct our questions um, directly to the department heads. This year was different because of the pandemic. And we all had to adapt. You know, what disturbs me is that we had one council member, Councilman McKenna, that just absolutely refused to adapt to the process. He just would not adapt. He, you know, he didn't participate in the budget hearing process, which I thought was rude and a slap in the face to all of the colleagues uh, that participated in the process. And in my opinion, it was a slap in the face to the public in general. When you don't participate in the process because things are not going the way you want, it is just, it shows me your character. It shows me exactly who you are. And as a council person, it shows me exactly, you know, what I could expect from you. Which brings me to my last point, that the same council member, Councilman McKenna, voted last week to not adopt this budget that will bring us a zero increase in our tax, in our municipal taxes. And that tells me between that and his refusal to participate in the budget hearing process, because it was not being conducted the way he thought it should be, tells me all I need to know about him as a, uh, a person, his character, and as a representative to uh, his constituents. Thank you. And have a good evening, everyone. And again, kudos to uh, the council, the administrators, and Mayor Matt for bringing us a zero municipal budget. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's go with NAPIW. Hello, it's uh, Nancy Pivovar, 1129 oh. Myrtle Avenue. I just need a point of clarification. There's not going to be public comment at the end? Uh, no, there is not. Uh, it's a, this is a special meeting, so there's no public comment at the end. All right, because I just wanted to make people aware about the Supreme Court ruling today, and Plainfield should be proud because it upheld the 1964 Civil Rights Act that was written by a, a former Plainfield resident, Burke Marshall. Oh, okay. Well, un understood. Thank you but, for but letting that, uh, me speak. I appreciate that. And I sent you all an email about it. Thank you. All right. You have a good day. And Mary Berwinkle is next. Hi, everyone. This is Mary Bergwinkle, 1785 Sleepy Hollow Lane. Um, I hope everybody is healthy and um, contemplative given the state of the nation. Um, I have three points about the budget. One, I, I'd like to second pretty much everything Tim O'Connor just said. I mean, I think that um, uh, COVID-19 is a tragedy, and but it also... Um, gave opportunities for cutting the budget. And I hope, but I'm not sure that, you know, when COVID-19 is not there, that all of those things won't immediately go back into the budget because we need to have real cuts so that we will continue to have um, uh, smaller budget increases. Um, also, I, I'm, I was disappointed that since there are Robert's rules that, if, um, that, that, that control the way that city council and city council debate happens, that, they, that the rules were changed and it appeared to me that they were clearly designed to keep my council member, Sean McKenna, and also Ashley Davis to an extent from asking questions. And I, I think that is, um, not a good thing, and it was just a very disappointing to me. I know that Sean read every line item in the budget, and I think that he should have been allowed to ask questions. Um, I'm also sorry that 
you know, the mayor and the city and whoever sent out that robocall um, had to make this political and pick two of the probably nine, 10, 11, 12 people who worked really hard on this budget out uh, and politicize it by uh, emphasizing them. So thank you very much. Thank you. Brenda, state your name and address for the record. Brenda, yeah, you can unmute yourself and you can speak. Start by oh. stating your name and address for the record, please. Okay. Hi. Yes, my name is uh, Brenda Moore at 1700 Watchon Avenue. And uh, this is just for the uh, record that I do appreciate that uh, Councilman Sean McKenna does go through the efforts, the great efforts of going, you know, through all the count, he goes through the efforts of asking all these questions because he makes me, it, it appears to me that he takes the, the time and effort to look through these different things. Um, and because a lot of times when I'm looking at these Zooms meetings, it seems like he, he is the only one, in addition to Councilman Ashley, that's that's the only one that's that's asking questions. So despite what one of the other correlatives, um, when, when she say, when she says that, it seems as though that he, he has, not that he has his own agenda, but I, I appreciate when he makes the effort to, to try to, to ask all these questions. So that's, that's, that's my, only comment, my only comment. I appreciate that he goes above and beyond. So thank you. And thank you as well. Okay. Seeing no one remaining, I will accept the motion to close public hearing. So be uh, second. I didn't hear a motion. I heard a second. No motion. So be it. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Abstentions? Public hearing is now closed. Uh, now, a total of 30 minutes has been allocated for public comments limited to resolutions being considered this evening. If you wish to be heard, please hit the hand icon uh, and you will be unmuted. Once unmuted, give your name and address for the record. Each speaker will be given three minutes. The floor is now open. Robin Bright, if you can, um, if you would like to speak again, uh, go straight ahead, go right ahead. Name and address for the Yes, record. thank you. I didn't realize there was gonna be a second uh, public comment, uh, which I'm glad there is. And I, I, I just wanna make one point of clarification. I said nothing about, and this goes to the last caller. The, the, these are about the two resolutions. No, oh, about, yeah. okay. All right, well, is it about, the, okay. I thought the last one was about the resolutions. I'm sorry, I was muted. This, this is exclusively for resolutions and motions to be considered this evening. So the resolutions today are, are regarding uh, this two appointments to the Housing Authority and our municipal budget. So you need to speak regarding either, either of those items. And again, I, I hope that the council votes in favor 
of passing the budget as presented. It's a good budget, um, no matter what the reason for the cuts, it's a good budget. You know, you know we have to take things as they come. Um, I, I strongly urge that they pass the budget and, and we could deal with next year when next year comes. And if we have to make cuts next year, then I'm sure there'll be a process again, uh, a budget hearing process next year, and we'll deal with that next year. But for this year, for now, this is a good budget. I strongly urge the council to pass it. Thank you. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, next, we have. I'm not sure that may, perhaps it's the same name. It says League no. of Women Voters. No, it's uh, we are doing our trial test tonight for the league for the forum on third uh, Wednesday night. This is Timothy Priano. Okay. Okay. I wanted public comment just to remind people about the forum on Wednesday evening. Um, yes, sir. President, that's not. Yeah, Tim, I'll, ma I'll make the announcement at the end. Okay, that's not I was trying to do it before. And Charles, calm down over there. Res resolution. The old handbag. What a bunch of circus clowns. Hello, Tim, you're still, your mic is still on. <laughs> Council President, the speaker is out of order and should refrain from personal attacks. Yes, he should. I agree. We can move to the next. We can move to the next speaker. Stay right. to your self unit. Stacy, thank you. Good evening, all. This is Stacy Welch, five fourteen Church Place. I had the opportunity to sit for Fourth Ward, Seaback. Believe he did. He say circus clowns. Uh, Councilman Good, please, please continue, Mrs. Welch. I'd like to thank the council for his hard work, um, in getting this budget passed. These are circumstances that no one could have predicted, neither prepare for. I do hope that tonight you all adopt the budget and thank you for all of the hard work that you've put in. Thank you. All right, seeing no more, uh, I'll entertain an, uh, a motion to close public comments for resolutions and motions being considered this evening. So no. moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition, abstentions, public comments is now closed. Uh, okay, uh, clerk, will you please offer the resolutions? Resolution 20 authorizing the appointment of Dolly Hamlin as commissioner to the Plainfield Housing Authority. Okay, any questions from council beginning with uh, Councilman Good? No questions, Council President. Okay, uh, Councilwoman Davis. I do not have any questions. Okay, Councilwoman Mills Ransom. No questions. Okay. Councilman McKenna. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering when we uh, stop the practice of providing um, resumes for appointees and um, having them participate in questions that we can prepare in advance based on their resume. We just put up names and yeah. Actually, with 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 uh, Dolly Hamlin, Hamlin, she was already on the housing authority and had resigned for personal reasons. So this is just an appointment of of a a, a member that a commissioner that was already there. So we There's decided. Still, still questions that can be asked, like what did she accomplish the first time, and what are her goals for this time? But that's that's my point. So. Understood. Uh, let's see, Councilman McCray. Any questions? None. Uh, any, any questions, Vice President Almighty? No questions. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, 
Clerk, can I have a roll call regarding this? Can you get a motion. Uh, I think second. I can. Second. Okay. Second. Thanks for the motion, Councilman McCray. All right. Uh, Clerk, can I have a roll call? Council members Davis? Yes. Good? Yes. McKenna? Yes. McCray? Yes. Mills Ransom? Yes. Vice President Armadi? Yes. Council President Hockaday? Yes. That is unanimous. This resolution has been adopted. Resolution 209 authorizing the appointment of Bridget Rivers as Commissioner to the Plainfield Housing Authority. Are there any questions from Council, starting with uh, Councilman Good? None whatsoever, uh, Council President. Okay, Councilwoman Davis? No questions. Okay, uh, Councilman McKenna? None. Uh, Councilman McCray? None. Councilwoman Mills Ransom? No. And Vice President Armadi? No. Okay. All right, may I have a motion to adopt this? So moved. Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Uh, All right. In, in the opposition, abstentions, this resolution is approved. Oh. Resolution 21020 authorizing the adoption of the calendar year 2020 Plainfield Municipal Operating Budget. Okay, are there any questions from council beginning with uh, finance chair Charles McCray? No, but I think this is a very good budget. As many folks have said, although it was a pandemic time, that we were able to work very hard with the administration and I give kudos to all that worked on this budget and I look forward to us passing it tonight. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Good, any questions? I agree with the uh, finance chair. In fact, um, this is something that uh, needed to be done. I think if uh, there was a tax increase that would have been something that would have been totally unacceptable by the residents of the city. So the fact that there is a zero increase, I think um, for the most part, many appreciate that. And I think the budget uh, <clears throat> should and will be passed on tonight. Thank you. Uh, questions from Councilman McKenna? Uh, I don't have any questions, but I do have a couple of comments. One is uh, sure. with respect to um, Robin Bright's comment uh, that I voted against the budget. I didn't vote against the budget um, because I thought an increase should be had. I voted against the budget because the cuts are not the right cuts. They're all going to come back next year with the tax increase. And I also asked that another million dollars cuts be found so that instead of a flat budget, it would actually be. Uh, a cut in people's property taxes. Um, and for uh, for Lynn Anderson person, first of all, please tell your husband I said hello and I'm seeing him at planning board meetings. And secondly, uh, if you tell your real estate clients that taxes aren't being raised, be careful because next year they're going to be, because these cuts are deep cuts and sustainable. They're all just COVID related cuts. And we've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on Mitchell and other supposed technologies, but we have we're getting any efficiencies that are driving uh, long-term cuts. So those are my comments. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Davis, any questions or comments? Yes, um, I don't have any questions, but I do have a comment. Um, I do have to agree with some of the other uh, public speakers that this budget is not necessarily a sustainable one because all we did was cut out things that are not happening this year. Um, and my concern is one, that next year taxes will go up once we put those expenses back in. And two, I'm also concerned if we're gonna meet that uh, tax collection threshold that we have set for this year. Um, with all that being said, I know that residents can appreciate um, that there is not an increase in taxes. Um, it would have been my hope that we did just a little bit more um, and found some sustainable cuts. But um, I think overall residents will be okay with the budget given the times that we're in currently. Thank you, Councilwoman. Uh, Councilwoman Mills Ransom. Uh, yes, I think I'll make a comment in terms of, I'll start with a cut is a cut is a cut. And it makes sense 
that you cut where uh, you know that at this point in time, those monies are not needed. I do not have a crystal ball and I don't know what next year will bring. I know that we have an active um, administration in trying to do the best that can be done with the monies that we have. I also know that we look for grants and that if someone had studied the budget like most of us do, and some people think that we do not do the studying because we do not ask a plethora of questions at any time, but I am an educator and I do read and I do understand what I read and I do know how to contact people when I have questions. Um, so I am saying to the public, that we did this job and we're happy most of us sitting on this council are homeowners. I know I've owned a home for 46 years in Plainfield. And so I'm happy to see the reduction, but I do know that we have services that we need to do for residents and we will do that. So I think it's time for us to stop playing these games about where the cuts came from uh, it was cut. We will benefit from this. We will work hard next year to not have whatever is being um, brought, um, what do you say, uh, forecast by some of my fellow council people because I just don't have that crystal ball. But I know that we do work hard for you. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vice President Armadi. Yeah, um, I do want to echo the sentiments of uh, Councilwoman Mills Ransom when she says a cut is a cut is a cut. So, you know, while they might be temporary this year, obviously when 2021 comes, then we'll, they'll deal with that then. But for right now, we did meet the, the needs of the community in terms of not having an increase. So I do want to commend the administration, his director, as well as the council president, the finance and my other council colleagues involved for bringing us to this moment. So again, I thank all of my colleagues for your hard work. Thank you. I'll just offer uh, some comments regarding the budget. You know, first of all, I'd like to thank all the council uh, members for participating in this process <clears throat> um, and, and, and really digging deep uh, to offer all your suggestions in terms of how we can uh, we we can we can save and, and get this budget to where where we got it, um, this is a you know 2020 has just been uh, a year unlike any that I can remember. Um, those that might have been here can think about you know years you know maybe 50 years ago or more that might have been been similar, but. It's just been a, a, a year that has really caught us all off guard and has required us to, to, to really try to aspire to our higher selves and, 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 uh, and dig deep to, to do for others. Um, you know, whether it's uh, you know, this COVID crisis or now all the social unrest that's going on now, um, you know, we are all asked to, you know, to, to re-examine uh, what government means, what it means to govern, what what a what what kind of budget should we pass, and you know, for me, uh, you know, I'm certainly in support of this budget, uh, and and I, I I am excited for residents that there will be no municipal increase, um, uh, but there you know, there's other issues that that I that we will deal with as we move forward. It won't. Uh, be taken care of in, the, in this budget, but I, you know, I know a lot of people are talking about reimagining uh, what uh, what it means to police our community, uh, what it means to provide social services to community for people who need it, uh, to making sure that we're thinking intelligently about those things as well. Um, so, as we move forward, you know, perhaps there'll, there'll be a committee to look at that to figure out how we can provide better social services for our residents. Um, and, you know, e either apart from the police department or even using our, our, our police to, to have more progressive thinking in terms of what we do, how we treat our residents and how we keep everyone safe and also how we advance everybody, everyone's lives. So that's something that's definitely on my mind. 
uh, as I know it is with, uh, with, with many of the council people, uh, you know, who've attended rallies recently. Uh, and that, that's something that's on my mind and on my heart, you know, that, I, that, we, you know, that, that we will continue to examine uh, as we move forward. Um, but for now, um, it is a, a, a budget that represents no municipal increase. And I think that that's a, that's a pretty good start. You know, it's not where we, where we hope to finish, but it, I, it's certainly a good start for calendar year 2020. All right, so do we have a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Okay. Clerk, can I have a roll call? So roll call on the 2020 Plainfield Municipal Operating Council members. Davis? Yes. Good? Yes. Hannah? No. McCray? Yes. Mills Ransom? Yes. Vice President Armadi? Yes. Council President Hockaday? Yes. Six in favor and opposed, the budget has passed. Thank you. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any oppositions, abstentions? This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all. <laughs>